this is the world's biggest Minecraft piston door. So, it technically is a, a massive slime block flying machine. It is like kind of the hip door variety, which means it kind of comes out of the ground from down here, which is this door, comes up, and fills the space up here. So, this little thing over here is a pretty much just a backup copy of that in case someone went wrong with it when I originally was building it. This can work good to also show you how this works. So, look at it. It is, well, <clears throat> so yeah, you got the pistons, observers, slime block, honey box. Slime blocks and honey blocks don't stick together, that's why I can work well. But the store is 188 blocks by 188 blocks. It is massive. So if you look at it down here, it just. See, this is. I'm down here, I can't place any blocks underneath here because this is the very bottom of the world. Then heading up to the top, which is going to take a second. Or we'll just go slash. Let's just go. Okay. Uh, now we're at the top. Yeah, commands were good. So now we're up at the top. This is technically, there could technically be a bigger one by just repeating the thing a couple more times. Because this thing is like 10 blocks off, which is just because of a miscalculation on my part here size so I think it could have been five taller which that wasn't big enough of a deal for me to really feel like trying to redo it so it could technically be a couple blocks bigger so there could be a little bit of a challenge for somebody to try to make a bigger one here But I'll go into a different world to show you more of kind of how it works with a smaller scale because this is so laggy if I can just move this up quickly. It could take too long and too laggy to explain it. So I'll go over to a different world. All right, here, this is a 10 by 10 version of a very similar door here. I made this one for a different video at a different point here. But this is going to be better to show off more of how it works because it doesn't create tons of lag running it. But we'll go around to the back just to show how it works. And so, well, probably should quickly turn down some sounds here. Alright, we're going to change down the tick speed to show a little bit slower here. So we go slash tick. Right, and we're going to put it to about 10. So now if I go and... Uh, that was pretty quick. See, that's kind of how it works entirely. So it just kind of goes down and kind of in order like that. Except the big one is just that much bigger though. A lot bigger. Can we just show it going up again? Basically this layer gets pushed and pushes that one there. As that one gets pushed, it pushes it up until it can't go any farther. And down here it just gets it all activated before the bottom piece field to actually push it. So now we'll head back to the, big, the world with the big. All right, so here now you can see that it is the entire same system, just repeated many more times and are just a lot longer. So pretty much when this one moves here, this when this layer here moves, brings up these pistons, the observers activate it. We'll push this one, and it just goes up like that. <clears throat> but to get started, you have this entire area down here which to make it work you need to activate each layer 
all at the same time. You can't just do like start on the corner and have well go 15 blocks another repeater. They all all these repeaters per each layer have to activate at the exact same time. Then this one is right after it, and you just keep going all the way until you get to the bottom. At the bottom, if we go all the way down here. Take a second here. This will, once it gets all the way down to the bottom, it will activate the engines down here. Once it does that, then it's going until it hits the obsidian at the top. Or if I made it to the correct size, it would hit the world border. But to show more of how this works here, I can use just a single layer of it here. So I went and just used the world edit, world edit and took a, just a layer of it. And so now if I head to the top here, we can show kind of how this works here. I'm just going to require a little bit of precision because I need to zero ticket. Let's play some obsidian. We just got to go. So that's what would happen when the first one goes. Then, like about three ticks later, yeah, this is what's going to be a problem. We're going to grab an observer to do this. We'll get a couple set out here. So first, that would happen. Then after that one, you'd get this one a couple ticks later, and as you'd see, as that one got pushed up, push that one up again. So we'll let that one hap happen, and it would just keep going down all the way until you get to the bottom and activate the engine. Which I'm not going to do that now because that would take forever. That's pretty much how that all works there. Works fairly well. So, it's a fairly big door, and I'll have a world download in the description of the video. So, if you want to explore it for yourself, you can do that. But, we'll, well, I'll be showing you. Okay, and the door is down. Or I may have just gone to a previous backup with the door down. Who knows? No one will ever know. But so now this is the door completely open. If you want to take a look at it, it's a fairly big kind of area here. You see? And yes, there will hopefully be a world download for it if you want to experiment with it. But this is Mr. Quack Quack, and until next time, goodbye.